This is our Conti Empress Vintage Espresso Machine that we've uh, finished uh, restoring. We're quite happy with the way it turned out. Uh, let's give it a little look at the other side. You can see their uh, nickel-plated chrome uh, brass panels all the way around. Uh, this is a, a mature chrome uh, plexiglass top piece, which in any restoration you always have one problem that you can't quite solve, and this piece was... What, did, what was the word you used, Barb? Broken. Broken. This piece was broken in the center, and uh, it didn't mend uh, beautifully, so it's covered with a strip of metallic tape. It could be that a stainless rail around the top of here would be a real nice effect of well, but this is the original part here, this Mercure Chrome. I'll give a little tour around here. I'm particularly pleased with the way the control functions uh, worked out on this. This is a, a gas machine that's been converted to electrical control. I put in a double uh, switch system. I would just kind of like to show this off here, uh, how it works when it's on low. Uh, this is our voltage. We're pulling five and a half amps on, one, on the single element and uh, 641 watts. That's on one element with the control light here. We'll switch up to the high control. 1217, 1208, it's about, just settles in around 1200 watts on the element. And uh, 10 and a half amps, well within your, uh, your kitchen circuit. So it, it worked out just beautifully, the control system on this for the electrical. Uh, while this finish is heating up, of course I forgot my pitcher and so we'll just burp off a few here. This is the the steam quick touch. This is the this is the water faucet over here and had I had my pitcher I could really make some steam. This is a very good steaming machine. Now uh, this uh, machine is set up with a Sarai pressure stat, and the um, it's early technology. Uh, people think that you know digital is better than analog. The, the modern devices, well, they're just different. And this has a single boiler with a dipper tube that feeds the group. Now, this group is it, it's very very heat stable very temperature stable. Once it gets up to temperature, you can touch it. You, know, you could burn yourself, but it stays very stable. Now, since it is early technology, just like the 57 Chevy, you had to learn how to drive it, and we had to learn how to use it, what, two or three days before we got a good shot? Yeah, about three. And about three days, and um, our main issue was that our shots were too hot. And so, fiddled with the pressure stat, ended up with a setting of about one bar. You can see the lines there indicating one and a half is their comfort zone, but we ended up with about one for the espresso blends that we use. First thing that happened was that I didn't have this trim piece on, thinking it was just to make it beautiful. And since I would have to take it off later, uh, it, it stayed off until I realized that is an important part of the heat exchanger for, for the entire group. This is a thin piece of chrome-plated brass that almost acts like a chimney, and the, the, the heat actually comes out of the inside you know, quite nicely. Actually, we're, it feels good. My hands are a little cold out here in the, in the photo studio. Anyway, uh, very, very temperature stable, but the barista is who makes the coffee with this. Uh, the machine uh, uh, does one thing, it boils water, it feeds the group, but there's a lot of behavioral uh, situation, a lot of behavioral modification that you have to do to get the shot you want. We like a, a, a fairly cool cup, cup temperature, so we ended up uh, with a program that involved, um, uh, we would heat the cups with a short blast from the group, and set them aside, and then take the portafilter and run it under uh, cold water to get it to, so it was cold enough to touch. And it, once it felt comfortable in the hand, then we went ahead and proceeded with the with the shot, and it worked out quite nicely. Um, 
once we uh, 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 got that worked out, the other thing that I discovered was the size of the shot is dependent on how long you pre-infuse, as you'll see when I do pull a shot here finally. And if you pre-infuse longer, the longer you pre-infuse, the more volume you get in the shot. We were running, uh, we were using the the Sineso uh, triple basket, which makes very very nice shots for us, and we do like that that basket. This is a the original basket in this right here, which I've pre-prepared, is a double 14 gram double basket. Uh, one thing about this original portafilter is that there's no spring. As you see, has a little bit of wear. Um, our FEMA portafilter fit on this machine just fine, and it does have a spring, and we were preferentially using that, but this is the original here. Um, the, but as I said, you're basically, uh, your restrictions have a lot to do if you pre-infuse longer you end up with more volume. If you pre infuse shorter, you have less. And so we'll just go ahead, we'll just come down and we'll just go straight through. It's quite nice when you just pull the handle, you walk away, and you come back and enjoy your coffee. And there we have the, the Conti Empress fully restored. We're very, very happy with the way it works out. You can leave it on all day, all night. It uses 7 kilowatts a day. Uh, we tested it for over a week period. 7 kilowatts a day, that's about 50 cents at our, at our rates to have a nice hot cup of espresso waiting for you in the morning when you first get up. Conti Empress. Thank you very much.